Peter Norwood. And I'm Peter Norwood. No, Jack. You're Jack Kleisler. Peter Norwood. And we're live here from Channel 4 News. Today's top story is Pascal's Triangle. Wait, let's go live on the scene to Peter Norwood for some breaking news. So, recently, a man was just found dead outside his pool after being attacked by a pack of wild wolves. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Peter. Today, our top story is Pascal's Triangle, and here's Jack Klesser to tell you about the history of Pascal's Triangle. Hi, I'm Peter Norm, and Pascal's Triangle. Sorry, I'm Jack Klesler, and Pascal's Triangle was first created by Justian in the 11th century. Later, in the 13th century, Yang Hui advanced the triangle and named it after himself, Yang Hui. And even today, China still calls it by this name. Finally, the triangle was named after French mathematician Blaise Pascal in the 17th century. Back to you, Jack. Me? And here's Peter Norwood to tell you exactly what Pascal's triangle really is. Pascal's triangle is a triangle arrangement. Paul, are you listening? Nope. So Paul, what do you think Pascal's triangle is? Well, it could be wrong, but I think Pascal's triangle is an old, old wooden ship used in Civil War era. Paul, I think I you Pascal's triangle. No, Paul. The definition of Pascal's triangle is a triangle of numbers in which a row represents the coefficients of the binomial series. The triangle is bordered by ones on the right and left side. And each interior number is the sum of the two numbers above. See how 5 and 10 is 15, 20 and 15 is 35, 3 and 3 is 6. So Paul, do you know anything about Pascal's triangle? What? Oh, oh, sorry. No. Oh yes. I mean, I was quite the expert on Pascal's triangle since day one. The triangle can be constructed by first placing a one alone, the left and right edge. Then the triangle can be filled out from the top by adding together the two numbers just above the left and right of each position in the triangle. One interesting thing about Pascal's Triangle is that it goes on forever. Yes, forever. Oh my, let's go back to Peter North to tell the good people of Chapel Hill some breaking news. Oh, hi there. Recently, a man was found dead off of Homestead Road. I need some more water. I think I did that. So sad. Now Jack is going to tell us a little bit more about Pascal's triangle. One property of the triangle is that if all the positions containing odd numbers are shaded black, and all the positions containing even numbers are shaded white, this is known as the Sierpinski gadget, named after the 20th century Polish mathematician Wojciech Sierpinski. Oh yeah, Paul, I think it was me that killed the guy with the trident. Now let's go out to Peter Norwood to tell us something rather interesting about the triangle. One interesting thing about the triangle is if a diagonal of the numbers of any length is selected starting at any one of the bordering sides of the triangle and ending on any number inside the triangle on that diagonal, the sum of all the numbers inside the selection is equal to the number below the end of the selection that is not on the same diagonal itself. This is called the hockey stick theorem. Now that Jack is going to show us what this looks like. Here, I will demonstrate the hockey stick theorem on the board. As you can see, the diagonals of any length is selected starting at the ones bordering on the right and left side of the triangle and ending on any number inside the triangle and ending diagonal to the final number of the ones diagonal. The sum of the numbers on the selection is equal to the number at the end of the selection that is not the same diagonal to itself. So, if we pick numbers, say it's a 
one, two, and three. Goes diagonal, and then diagonal to the final number is six. And it goes throughout any time, any part of the triangle, as long as you start on the edge and go diagonally. So we can start one plus three plus six plus ten plus fifteen plus twenty one plus twenty eight plus thirty six is one twenty. And as you can see, it makes a hockey stick shape. And that's why it's known as the hockey stick theorem. Hockey stick theorem. Wrong sport, Peter. Sorry, sorry. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Jack. Now, we're going to learn about the significance of Pascal's triangle. The triangle is mostly used in algebra because the entries in the triangle represent binomial coefficients. Also, the triangle is used to determine probabilities. Now, does the everyday man use Pascal's triangle for anything? We'll go to Peter Knoll to ask a few people about Pascal's Triangle. Alright, we're on the scene, and we're going to come ask some people what they know about Pascal's Triangle. Hello? Hi, I'm Peter Norwood. Hey, Do you know Peter. anything about Pascal's Triangle? Um, I'm pretty sure it's a triangle with numbers in it. Is that all you know? Yeah. Do you use Pascal's Triangle in everyday life? No. Alright, thank you for your help. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Okay. What is Pascal's triangle? Uh, Do you know? Yes. It's when uh, two rectangles merge on a piece of graph paper. Nope. Huh. There it is. False. Paul Graham. somebody else. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Do you know anything about Pascal's Triangle? Oh, ma'am? Oh, okay. Walk away. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> As you can see, the everyday man does not use Pascal's Triangle in many ways. Sure, if you're a mathematician, you might use Pascal's Triangle some, but we have come to the honest conclusion that Pascal's Triangle does not have much significance nowadays. We have told you all about Pascal's Triangle, such as the history, the explanation, how you construct it, the hockey stick theorem, how it is used today, and the significance of this very interesting concept of Pascal's Triangle. From all of us here at Channel 4 News, Peter Norwood. Peter Norwood. <laughs> Paul Miller. Amy Haygood. And Paul Miller. You stay classy, Chapel Hill.